Today we're going to be comparing the FFAR from Cold War to its closest counterpart within Warzone, and that is the Ram 7. Also, just as a heads up, anytime I say FAMAS in the video, I'm referring to the full auto FFAR, not the trash burst FR556 from Modern Warfare. So this is a continuation in the series where I compare one weapon to another. Obviously, I've already done the MP5 versus the MP5 for Cold War and Modern Warfare. I did the DMR versus the Type from Cold War since they transferred over and kind of compare some of the differences. Today, we're gonna to be comparing both of these weapons. Let me know down in the comments section, is there another comparison you'd like to see? I know some people were kind of mentioning Stoner versus the Bruin. There's other people out there saying the sniper rifles, maybe the Pellington versus the car or the Tundra versus the HDR. Let me know down in the comment section. If you do enjoy the video, learn something new, please do me a favor, hit that like button. Goal in today's video is 5,000 likes. If you're brand new, looking to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, just make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Let's go ahead and get into some of these comparisons. Right, so right here is the time to kill comparison. Milliseconds is over on the left. The lower the number, the better, because that means you are killing faster. The higher the number is worse, because it means you're killing slower. As we go over here on the bottom line, this is distance in meters. As you go further away, you would expect that most of the time the TTK would increase, because it's going to require more shots to kill. And obviously, this is a statistical time to kill. Meaning that this is if you are 100% accurate, you fire every bullet, every bullet lands, and you do not miss. If we're talking about a practical time to kill, you start to factor in recoil, but that really just depends on the player's skill. So we work off of this one, and then based off the side to side, it can be a little bit trickier depending on your own individual skill level. I've actually com combined a little bit different data here. Uh, when it comes to the 5.56 weapons in Modern Warfare, pretty much all of them do the exact same damage to the entire body. Um, and then the headshot gets a little bit higher damage. We don't see the same thing with the, with the FFAR or the FAMAS. We're seeing the base damage slightly different than the chest. And then obviously when you go in the headshot, you are getting a little bit more damage. For both of these weapons, regardless of where you shoot, you're going to end up with the fastest time to kill of only headshots of six. And it goes all the way up to nine in the close range. And then it drops off significantly harder for the ram as we can see as it gets further out. So this just kind of gives you a basic breakdown of the weapons as we come through here. If you could be incredibly accurate, you're going to end up with a, a fast time to kill here. Not so fast that the, the ram couldn't compete, but if you're going to be using this for your close to medium range option, you're going to need stuff that can melt. And this actually allows you to compete with the MAC-10. Obviously, there's ADS factor in there because that's an SMG, but this allows you a little bit more freedom to push people up to maybe around 40-ish meters and then allow you to have a long range option like a sniper or a marksman rifle of some kind that fits in your general play style. If we only landed body shots and maybe we didn't get chest shots in there, we'd still end up with a TTK that is slightly faster than the Ram. Does this mean that the FFAR is meta? Not necessarily. I think people are still gonna be prefer the MAC-10 with the DMR. You could combine this with the DMR. Obviously, they'd share ammo, so you'd end up with some tricky situations. That's why I would say that normally, if you're the type of ram that you're gonna run around with the sniper, the CAR-98 is probably your best bet. Once they do hit that drop-off, though, regardless if you're getting body shots or chest shots, it's not gonna make a difference in the time to kill for the, for the FAMAS. If we jump into the RAM, it's not going to make a difference because it doesn't matter with the chest shots anyway. But obviously, if you mix in some headshots, you would lower that TTK. But they're pretty on par in terms of that value. And the reason why there is a difference here, even though they're the same number of shots, is because the FAMAS has a faster rate of fire of approximately 50 rounds per minute. And that translates to this difference in TTK. So once we already kind of got an idea of how the damage works, now we got to see how they compare in terms of ADS movement um, and then overall bullet velocity. Those are some of the biggest factors that you worry about getting into a gunfight and then also recoil so the first thing we'll take a look at is ads speed what pretty much what i did is i decked out both of these class setups the same way i would and you're going to see both of those class setups in today's video which basically put both of their aim down sight times at 270 so they're pretty much on par um and that means a lot in this particular aspect because the ram already had a little bit better ads than some of the rifles so it's good that they've transplanted the gun over so it is basically the ram 2.0 in that sense where a lot of the stats are going to be almost the same so when it comes to overall movement speed the ram comes in with this class setup at 4.36 meters per second um and then the famas comes in at 4.66 which is approximately seven percent faster and one of the main reasons for this is because when you actually start looking at the attachments and the way they work 
um, some of the pros and cons don't necessarily impact the same things. So in the case of the FAMAS, it doesn't really have stuff that slows down its movement the same way that the Ram is. Obviously you put on a longer barrel, you put on a heavier mag, you put on a particular grip, you end up modifying some of these stats um, and hurting them in a negative way in movement, but they might help other aspects like stability, range, bullet velocity. There's a lot of other variables and the, and the Cold War weapons don't necessarily have the same cons. So in this particular aspect, the FAMAS comes out on top that you're gonna have a little bit faster movement, uh, which is a huge plus. So uh, across the board comes as a win for the FAMAS, a tie, and then now a win for the FAMAS. Bullet velocity is another interesting one. If you were only factoring the base bullet velocity, the Ram would end up winning this by, by a pretty large margin because it comes in right around 700 bullet velocity and the FAMAS is right around 600. Once you start attacking on the attachment like the monolithic suppressor, the certain barrel, you're gonna end up with a situation where you're pushing the bullet velocity up towards of around 1350. And this is where they end up being pretty tied. Um, in my numbers, it could just be based off frame rounding that the FAMAS came out like 1% better. But overall, it looks like they've basically designed these weapons to pretty much have the same bullet velocity when you're stacked. So this ends up being another tie in my opinion. So when I was comparing the individual barrels, they do help pretty much all of them help across the board. And this is kind of what we've seen with the trend with the other rifles, obviously the DMR and the type and a lot of those tactical rifles are an exception because they're just coded incorrectly, I think. I think they put a plus instead of a minus. Uh, but when it comes to the barrels, if you're using the reinforce, it's supposed to help with your range and bullet velocity. But I think the standard range on the FAMAS is okay. And the TTK doesn't drop so hard. So I prefer bullet velocity. But if you're gonna use the reinforce, it's gonna increase the bullet velocity from about 630 up to about 1100, which is about a 75% increase when you're combining that with the agency suppressor. When we use the Ranger barrel, this ups it by over 100%. Uh, we end up with the bullet velocity of 1350. When we go over to the takedown barrel, we end up with the same bullet velocity. We get that same 75% increase, again, combining with that the agency suppressor. Uh, and then when we actually include the task force, which is supposed to help with damage, range, bullet velocity, um, it only bumps it up about 50% when you combine that with the agency suppressor up to 964 bullet velocity. Um, and when it comes to the damage, uh, I wanted to touch on this point. I actually tested the damage and it looks like it only applies additional headshot damage. It brings the headshot from 45 for the FAMAS up close and uh, up to 47. And when you do the math, it doesn't change the TTK. So you're really not getting any benefit for damage. Bullet velocity isn't as good as another weapon uh, and the range wasn't really noticeable. So you have three different things it's helping but you're not really getting much out of it. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that even when it comes to Cold War. The main reason for that is because at 150 health, a lot of times you equip that barrel, instead of being needing two shots um, to get lower the time to kill, sometimes you only need one when you're using that specific barrel. So I think that one's specific that it won't probably be viable when it comes to Warzone, at least based off the numbers and the way it works. In addition to that, it does add slight amount of recoil, which with this weapon, you don't need any extra recoil. So I would advise against that one. Uh, but if you're gonna use the, the Reinforced Ranger or Takedown, pretty much those are all gonna be good option in terms of getting bullet velocity that's gonna allow you to hit your shots. Obviously with the Ranger giving you the maximum bullet velocity, matching the Kilo, the Ram, and all these weapons that get decked out all the way, it's matching those bullet velocities. So the last thing we'll talk about before we get into the class setups is recoil patterns. And this is where they differ significantly and it really comes down to a matter of preference. Iron sights obviously on the, the FAMAS, I personally think are cleaner. Some people might like the iron sights on the RAM. They are okay, maybe in 6v6, but I think at range it can be a little bit cluttered. So it's really a matter of preference on that end. But when we look at the overall recoil patterns, you can see the recoil patterns pretty much do the exact same thing when I fired 30 bullets at the same distance, right? So you can see how that kind of blends and moves. We have the FAMAS that does a little bit of an S shape, not super wide, so very manageable. Um, and then we have the RAM, which just goes up and then it goes all the way to the, to the left. We can see that curve. It does that opposite recoil pattern that a lot of people don't like, even though the M4 has the exact same recoil pattern, but it goes to the left. It goes the opposite way. Um, so overall, it really comes down to a matter of preference in terms of vertical, the, the RAM has significantly less recoil, as you can see side by side when I fired 30 bullets. But when it comes to the side to side, it goes pretty much up and then it 
makes a whole detour all the way to the side. Let's go ahead and get into the class setups. One of the things I will mention here is that obviously the secondary weapon would likely be the sniper rifle that I'm talking about, and these would both be the primary option. Keeping in mind that these are not going to replace a Mac 10 Diamati, those things are designed to be very destructive point blank range. Um, this is still good short to medium because of the TTK, the, the bullet lot, everything goes into it. Recoils doesn't become as big of an issue when you're close to somebody um, as obviously 40 plus meters where you'd probably switch into that secondary, whether that's a DMR or a sniper. So right here, the class setup for this one is going to be the agency suppressor, the 21.2 inch Ranger barrel. Like I said, I'd avoid the task force takedown and reinforced are both good. Um, and you can kind of experiment with those and kind of see what works best for you. But overall, the one that's going to give you the maximum bullet velocity is the Ranger. Um, when we go to the field agent grip, this one's going to help with vertical and re uh, horizontal. This seems to be the most popular one. I guess you could go another way. Um, it's just really a matter of preference, but that's the one that I tend to prefer and it definitely does help out on the vertical recoil um, Just a hair so that's where you're really able to do that And then obviously that side to side bounce that can happen I use a 50 round mag the reload ends up being pretty good with those um, And that's kind of normally what you're gonna go and it has a built-in sleight of hand So you can't really go wrong with that then we have the serpent wrap which I ended up going back and forth between these I didn't really notice a difference at all um, and when you actually look at the stat bars, I know you're not really supposed to trust those at all, and I advise people not to. I, I tried to find if there was a difference in recoil, because if you actually look at these, they show that you get better recoil control and accuracy, but I, I'm guessing that flinch is somehow tied to those individual stats. So I still have to do a little more testing on flinch, but that's going to require way more testing for some consistent results. So right here, I, I would say both of these are good options. Um, anything else? More than welcome to, but these are the two main ones that I tested that gave me that same ADS speed that we talked about. And then for the RAM, we pretty much go with this option here, Monolithic Suppressor, the Ranger Barrel Commando, 50 round mag, and then the TAC Laser. You could put the TAC Laser to slide a hand. This does help out significantly with the ADS speed. Um, and if you wanted to help out the ADS speed even a little bit more, you could switch to Eclipse, but keep in mind that you're not gonna have as much recoil control, uh, but you will be a little bit faster. So it's kind of one of those trade-offs. Obviously, if you're only gonna strictly use this close range and maybe have the DMR for that medium to medium long, then you can go that route. But then you kind of end up a situation where wouldn't it be better just to use Mac 10? I don't know. It's really a matter of preference. So overall, when you compare these weapons, I would say they're pretty much mirrors of each other. But the FAMAS comes out just slightly ahead because of some of the things that we talked about. So either way, you got the RAM and the RAM 2.0. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video, learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor, hit that like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.